Hey, thank you so much for that great welcome and thanks for having me here. I really appreciate it uh, calling in from uh, Chicago. So we're gonna look at how can you make a difference in the world bigger than almost anyone ever made in history? And the answer is leveraging technology, especially machine learning. Uh, after billions of years now, one person can do unbelievable things. Uh, Larry Page from Google said, life begins at one billion examples. When we use machine learning, it's no longer like analytics where we're looking at thousands of transactions. Instead, we're looking at billions and even trillions of transactions. And because of that, we can do great things. Uh, the next slide shows a little bit about me. Uh, I've written a few books, built a few companies, uh, did my studies at Purdue University in electrical engineering and then machine learning at MIT uh, more recently uh, and written some books, uh, the top sellers on tuning. I work for a company as uh, uh they said earlier was viscosity and we work in these various areas, uh, whether it be the data apps like Apex. We also have several ACE directors at our companies and other ACEs. Uh, if you want a copy of the slides, I put my email here also that you can send to me. If you have a question and Twitter, I know they'll take questions later, but thanks so much for having me. But what we're gonna look at is really gonna give you a feel. This is for a beginner. So this is to give you a feel for machine learning. You wanna do great things in machine learning. You have to start with what can it do for me? How does it fit in the business I wanna make an impact is? How does it fit with how I wanna make a difference in this world while I'm here? The agenda, very easy. I always say win, stands for what's important now. What's important now? Understand we're in a period of great disruption. A little bit about Oracle and machine learning. Oracle has free Oracle Cloud. And they have autonomous database, which has machine learning built into it free. There's also applications, and I'm going to show you the business applications for your companies. I'm going to look a little at big data, machine learning, and Oracle applications, how robots will influence things. But most of all, this is to give you a feel, just a beginner feel for machine learning. But we used to have mainframes, big computers, and all of a sudden we're holding in our hands something more powerful than this large IBM mainframe. And we went to wearing digital, starting to implant digital, and we have this internet which is the hive mind where we share information as if we're doing today. Uh, and many things like prosthetics, this person's job is his prosthetic arm. Kind of like Edward Scissor's hands, the movie. But service robots are doing many things now, whether taking you to a meeting, checking you into a hotel, or helping you have different information or maybe at a restaurant. Innovation, though, is the key for companies that are very successful today. They leverage technology. They leverage machine learning. They leverage big data. They leverage Internet of Things, IoT. They leverage robots. And they deliver innovative products. We used to communicate with a telegraph, and then it was a telephone. Then a cell phone. It was very big. Now it's very small. Had encyclopedia, then it was Wikipedia. Used to be a filing cabinet, then a database. Very disruptive things. Then email went to Snapchat, Instagram. And then the USB became Google Docs, Wikipedia, Alexa, Siri. And the database administrator, now some of those databases can be managed with autonomous database. But you have that you know, telegraph, and then all of a sudden a phone comes out, or you have a phone, current technology, then a cell phone comes out. We don't go, ever go back in time. We're always moving forward. What kind of innovator does your company want to be? Does it want to be a tech innovator like Apple? 
Does it want to be a retail innovator like Amazon? They have things like Prime Day, sell things. So they want to be a marketing innovator like Google and then use that all that data they capture and use a product called TensorFlow that can look at a thousand pictures of cats and then TensorFlow, which integrates with Oracle after looking at a thousand pictures of cats. Now it knows what a cat looks like or a car looks like or a person. So when the autonomous car is driving down the road, it knows not to hit those things. And hopefully it does a good job. <laughs> Oracle's focus though, they're not a retail innovator. They're not a marketing innovator. They are somebody who gives you tools so that you can be the innovator, so that you can make the difference. Larry Ellis. Uh, thank you, so sorry for that. Uh, using Starlink and uh, maybe the satellite went behind. We were talking about how Oracle is making you the innovator. And they have tremendous cloud growth rate late. They were a little later than other people, but now they're growing fast. They also bought a data science company. Now every company is looking at that way to give them competitive advantage. But Oracle gives us machine learning in their Oracle applications or e-business suite. They give us machine learning for free with autonomous database, they give us a data science platform to go to open source algorithms. But keep in mind a robot, which is coming, may not look like one. And they work day and night, and they don't ask for any more money. But the autonomous database is really a robot too, one that manages itself, secures, tunes, recovers itself. So if I'm database administrator or developer, what does that mean for me? Well, it means data is becoming critical. The autonomous database will help me manage some of the databases, but I have to manage all the data and serve that up for people who are data scientists. If I am a developer, I wanna leverage that data, understand the data, but also leverage the data. To build an autonomous database, it takes just three minutes and it's up and running, 18C. Just three minutes, up and running, 19C. If I'm on 18C, Oracle will automatically upgrade me to 19C. 70% growth rate with autonomous database. Autonomous transaction processing, two and a half minutes to start it. Autonomous JSON to do JSON. Twice as fast as Mongo, half the price as Mongo. Took seven minutes to build it. I can go to the service console. I could scale it up and down, change the cores, change the storage. I could click on stop, stop the database, and it stops two minutes. Restart it, only two minutes. I also can go to the service console and click on machine learning notebooks and sign in. And then I could do things and learn about it, or I can build things with it. I do have to go from admin and build my own new users to use all of machine learning so I get the full palette. All these eyes, informational things. Also, I can run SQL statements or PL SQL or run SQL and PL SQL in a notebook. Or I could use Python in a notebook, or I can use R. I go in and there's lots of quick start tutorials. Takes just a few minutes to go through many of these. Then I can go to run SQL and do a select. Just select from the tables out there. I could also do create, insert. Here I'm doing tabular data. If I click on the pie chart, it will change it to a pie chart. And this is what a notebook looks like. I also do SQL or PL SQL in there. But when I'm doing machine learning, I always start with what does the business want to do? How can I help the company? How do I want to make a difference? And I have to understand the data and I have to build models for that data. I don't want to say find the best customers or find the best customers. I want to say I want to find the best customers because they spend a lot of money because they buy very often because they give me good partners, because they give me good references. There may be lots of reasons. And I wanna separate them or classify them into good 
and bad customers. Then I also want to do things like take some customers from big data. And once I know what a good customer looks like, I can then cluster data and find different groupings. When I use Oracle, I won't go through this. This is just for your information. I use supervised functions, which means I'm giving it data to train Oracle. I want to train it who classify data into good and bad customers. I want to teach it that I have good and bad customers. Then I will use an algorithm. And this is some mathematical equation or equations to separate customers into good and bad customers, for instance. I also can use unsupervised functions, means I do not provide data. I may just want to cluster big data into age groups because a certain age group buys my product. And then I have algorithms that are unsupervised learning. Some algorithms do both supervise, you use your own data. Unsupervised, they just use big data. But the process looks like this. First of all, I have a function, classify data into good or bad customers, or cluster data into different age groups. After I have the problem that I wanna do, either classify or cluster, then I'll pick which of these functions are best. Maybe it's what attributes makes a good customer. Then I wanna pick an algorithm that does this function. And I'm gonna take 60% of my data for supervised learning and train the model and I'm teaching it who's my good and bad customers. Then the other 40% of my data, I test the model and say, did the algorithm pick out the good customers or did it not? And then I try different algorithms and we'll see different ones. Oracle has other things. I have to be able to create a model and there's some syntax here. I'm not gonna go through it, but I will show you an example. There's an example where I say, use a support vector machine algorithm. That's my algorithm name in a settings table. And then I say, build a model which classifies data. Go into a certain table, this build, mining data build the table, by customer, whether they will buy a certain credit card called an affinity card. And the settings table, uses the algorithm support vector machine. So this is how I do machine learning. It will take you a while to learn this, but I wanted to give you just an example how it looks. And then here's some places where I can look up different models I've built. Here's another example. I'm gonna use algorithm support vector machine to find the attributes that are important for a given table insurance. Will the customer buy the insurance? What attributes gets them to buy it? Well, the first attribute is bank funds. They have a lot of money in the bank, they'll buy the insurance. The second one is if they're overdrawn, maybe they can't buy it and, it's, and some other ones. So the function attribute importance, the algorithm is in the settings table, support vector machines. Now I'm gonna take this, now that I know which attributes matter for a good customer, now I'm gonna say, let's use support vector machines again, but this time classify and find the good customers if they're gonna buy insurance. And then I'll do predict the probability that they're gonna buy insurance, that's my model name, using the bank funds, because I know that was a very important attribute and it will tell me whether they're gonna buy it or not. And there's an example that shows that. I'm not gonna learn it this fast, but it's nice to see it. And then you'll have these pre this presentation to look at. And these are many of the different algorithms that Oracle has built into the product, Oracle machine learning free of charge. Here's the exact name you have to use in the settings table for each of those. And they also have additional settings, you know, so if I use something like clusters, it's gonna to wanna to know how many clusters, and these are gonna be additional settings for a given algorithm. There's also default algorithms for a given function if I don't specify it. 
But what is an algorithm doing? It's performing some math. So if I'm looking for anomalies, it performs math, puts a circle around all these dots, makes the circle very small. Everything outside is an anomaly. Or linear support vector machine, for example, splits two groups of data, maybe good and bad customers, not the green line, not the blue line, but yes, the red line. So the math makes it as far as possible. So future customers, I know if they're going to be good or bad. How do I do it in autonomous database? I can go to the service council to machine learning notebooks. I could also look at many examples of anomaly detection or different attribute imports or clustering examples. But let's go to anomaly detection. As I did before, I have in my settings table, the algorithm support vector machine. Then I say, I'm going to this table called customer 360 model classify based on this table, customer 360, whether the customer ID is null. So I'm not looking for anything. I'm looking for just anomalies. Then I'm going to do just SQL. Find the probability that it's anomalous. Predict probability using this model I just built to see if they're anomalous in this, from this customer 360 table. And then I could do it by years of residence that makes them anom anomalous or by if they're married or separated or widowed. I can also go in and predict it and say, give me the top 15 anomalous customers. Or I could say, give me the attributes of those top anomalous customers and find the attributes that are making them anomalous. So what is the key thing I need to know with Oracle Machine Learning? SQL. If you know SQL, you could be great at machine learning. Another example is a decision tree, whether I'm either going to lose or win a case if I'm a lawyer. And maybe I'll win money or maybe I won't win money. And it calculates all the equations that happen in this flow chart to see if you should take the settlement. It's a different kind of algorithm, decision tree. And here's another example. The algorithm is a decision tree. It's classifying data to see if they'll buy this credit card. And then it will predict and do a probability on whether they're going to buy it. So I could separate the good or bad customers so salespeople know who to call. And these are more examples that Oracle has. You could just search on the web and learn these examples. So how many does Oracle have? They have all these functions. Classification is the function. And then underneath it, all these algorithms. So different ways to separate customers. And you'll see different ones do different things. Then clustering is the next function. And then different algorithms to do different clustering. So this I'm gonna go through very quickly and just give you a feel for what Oracle has. So in classification function algorithms, it has naive base, which is just, an, just a way of looking at using math, math, whether it's gonna be spam or not by looking at the words in the email or maybe sentiment analysis. It has, and this is just a Wikipedia example. And you could see a Gaussian, this is the equation that it's running for Gaussian to figure out if this person is a male or female based on their height, weight, or foot size. And here's the data. There's also logistic regression. This one is a classifier that classifies into one or another. Will they be able to pay their mortgage or will they not be able to pay? Will they vote one way or will they vote a different way? Will the person pass, will they fail the course or will they pass the course based on how many hours they have studied? They didn't study very much, they'll probably fail. They studied a lot, they'll pass. This is logistic regression, one of two choices, zero or one or zero or one rather. There's also linear regression. And this is to kind of predict the future numbers you're gonna have. And the coefficient of determination, this is one uh, output that you'll have. It tells you how close the points are to the lines. So that's nice to know too. 
There's also a decision tree classifier. We saw that earlier with the lawyer. There's also a random forest, which notice it can predict a one or a zero or a one or a zero. And it can keep predicting ones and zeros, but what it does is it looks at a grouping of, of many of these and it says, well, there's more ones than zeros, so I'm just going to use a one. I'm not going to put all the zeros and ones. And what that does is instead of a line that's very jagged, it smooths that line out. And it fixes this overfitting problem to make the line straighter. Very often used. There's also neural networks, which I talked about earlier. We use it with autonomous vehicles. Can also be used for speech recognition, handwriting recognition. Uses something that looks like the brain. Many layers. There's actually a mathematical equation that goes with this. It's looking at given pixels or given squares of this, and then it's doing some math in each level. And based on the previous level, uh, it it sets different weightings in the next level and biases. Now with deep learning, instead of you telling it which features to extract, maybe an eye, maybe a nose or ears, it will learn just by looking at the picture. So that's deep learning. Uh, support vector machine, we already saw this, where it separates good or bad customers by math. I can also do it with words, sentiment analysis, so text the semantic relatedness based on different words together. So many different types of classification. You have to look at your company and say, what kind do they need? What is a clustering you wanna do? This is breaking something into three different groupings. So K means three. If K is three, it will break it into three. I can do that also with words. You can also use an O cluster algorithm. The algorithm can do it based on density, not based on distance. So K means distance based. O cluster, Oracle cluster, is density based. I think that's a little bit better. There's also expectation maximization clustering, where it alternates between an expected step and as you know, this is a geyser that there's a certain delay as if the delay is very long, then it's going to be of longer duration. And over several steps, it figures out what that pattern is. It's also anomaly detection. We talked about this. Everything in the circle is okay. And everything outside is an anomaly. We can do this also with images and text, things like that. Uh, there's time series. Some sales happen, you know, at Christmas time where people give gifts or some other holiday. And there's some more information on it. There's also exponential smoothing. So with stocks, they bounce around a lot. So exponential smoothing will make the black line into the red line. Double exponential smoothing will make the blue line. And then I can give weighting that's different. So the older data is weighted lower and the newer data is weighted more so. It's also regression where I'm looking at the future of sales maybe, but regression sometimes is not a straight line. And generalized linear model will plot a much more difficult line to plot. Notice all the dots that are here. There's also a support vector machine regression. Notice the dots are here. Should it be a straight line or should it be maybe a wavy line like a sine wave? And then the margin of tolerance or the epsilon setting will decide which graph you're gonna make this based on your business. So what kind does your company need? Or is it stepwise? We're um, adding variables to improve things and then doing backward elimination where I'm taking stuff away kind of like Six Sigma. It's also neural network regression as well, or once again, I do neural networks, which Exadata can make very fast because you could put so many things in memory. It's also attribute importance. You find the best customers by classification, but maybe you want to know why they're your best customers. There's different ways to do it. One way is minimum descriptor length, this algorithm will just look at the basic things that make it your best customer. 
You know, it's like heads or tails. You don't care that the coin is not perfect. You just want to know it's going to be two choices. There's also more detail, principal component analysis called PCA. Looks at an eigenvector. In German, eigen means just like my very own. So, so if you wanted an eigen car, you had a car that you liked driving and you wanted to buy a new one, you say, give me my eigen car, one just like the car I have now. Well, in the same way, you have a customer that you like, and you want to find your eigenkustomer that's just like your good customer. And so if you find the eigenvector of your good customers, you can then look in big data for similar customers with the same eigenvector. Some may be bigger or smaller, so they have a different eigenvalue. And this is, goes with matrix math as well. It's also a KL divergence. And this says, you know, this is a basketball player, one that shoots very good, one that doesn't shoot very well. And there's a KL divergence between the two, and that's the measurement of surprise. If the divergence is zero, then it's the same. There's also a Kerr decomposition algorithm, which is taking a matrix and breaking it into the columns, the rank and the rows, or the C, U, R. So maybe I don't have to look at all the skin to do a good image recognition for this, but just one piece matters more. So these are just different attributes in ways you can look at those. There's also association rules. What do people buy together when they go to the store? Oh, they buy the bread and the diapers and the bread and milk and diapers and milk. And what do they buy most of all? It's called association rules. That's an a priori algorithm. Oracle also has feature extraction. You can use this with eigenfaces to look for certain features. So it limits the number of people you look at. And you don't have to do it with people. It could be with animals too. And basically, what is it doing? It's building a vector. It's also singular value decomposition. And this is doing feature extraction. It's denoising your matrix, this complex matrix, and simplifying it. So instead of, you know, all this, it just takes a part of each of those. There's also an explicit semantic analysis where you can go into topics or different words using things like Wikipedia. Is it the Bank of America or the Bank of the Amazon? Well, if it's talking about money and Visa and NASDAQ, probably Bank of America. But if it's talking about a river, maybe it's the Amazon River. Also text mining support for many algorithms that Oracle has. Uh, Oracle also allows you to do different cubes to roll things up. You might have done this before, or I look at different views, whether you're a product manager, financial manager, but I can also put those in memory. I could put them in partitions. I could look at data using external tables that aren't even in the database. And Oracle also has many statistical functions, just to keep in mind. You can see all the different functions and then algorithms underneath it. Clustering function, algorithms like k-means and o-cluster. Which ones do you need? That's what you have to decide. What are, what are the functions that I need to do? First of all, what's the business problem? Then what function do I need to do? What the algorithm do I need to do? Build it and then test it. And here's just an example of building, creating a model using an algorithm and then using it to test it to see if it's good. Uh, Oracle also has things if you're a data scientist like Lyft. This tells you if the Lyft is higher, it's a better algorithm. Same thing with cumulative gain or what's called a rock curve. So just another way to see that. But Oracle goes one step further and has auto machine learning now. So auto machine learning, I'm going to click on it and I say, classify this data to see if they'll buy this credit card. I don't know how to write the notebook, maybe. I don't know what, much about machine learning. So it goes and looks at all the algorithms that do classification, tests every one of them. And then it creates a notebook for you. And it create a notebook. 
and it did all this in four minutes. So something that took me two days, Oracle automatically could do in just four minutes. And there's some newer algorithms in 21C as well. Now, somebody actually went to the medical profession and said, what algorithms are they talking about in all these medical documents? And you could see the different ones out of the ones we were just talking about that they were talking about. They were talking about support vector machines. Why? Because support vector machines maybe do anomaly detection. Why were they talking about neural networks? Probably be uh, image recognition. So there's a lot of choices. I can go into machine learning. If I have some data, I can classify and find fraud or classify images for my autonomous car or use regression to forecast the market. Or maybe I don't have any data, unsupervised learning. I'll cluster it into targeted marketing for certain age groups. Or I could just have fun. This is paintings of Marie Antoinette and Henry VIII, Queen Elizabeth, and what they would look like today. That was using something called GANs. So what are you trying to build? You know, you're looking at image recognition. It, it will tell you which function and which algorithm you need. There's also robotic process automation. I won't go through this, but it's in the slides if you want to see more. But this is where a robot can open the email, read through it, and enter your e-business app and do a lot of the work for you, as much as 85% of it. You could see all the ways robotic process automation, and here's somebody who knows more about it if you want to send an email. Top jobs, though, are AI machine learning specialists. 74% annual growth. Python, number one language for machine learning, but also TensorFlow, also SQL, also R. All these are inside of Oracle, built in. Oracle has Oracle machine learning for Python. Looks like this, if you've never seen it. Oracle also has Oracle Analytics Cloud, which is very visually pleasing to display data, but they've added it with notice a k-means algorithm, split it into five clusters. K-means was a clustering algorithm. Notice it split the data into five groupings. Data becoming very valuable, why? Because it's easier to acquire customers, why? Because you understand them. You know the attributes that made them good customers. Big data, it's very big, it's very fast. Different values, different varieties, different truths of data, veracity. Isn't it nice to have a converged database, Oracle, that I can keep all my relational JSON, key value, graph, spatial, files, and use Java, I can use JavaScript with the database. IoT is just gonna give me more data. Even more data from my house, all kinds of stuff. Maybe my refrigerator will lock because the bathroom scale told it I'm not buying the right food. But big data is going to tell me what's the best thing, not why did it happen or what will happen or what happened, but what's the best thing that could happen? Prescribe it to me. If you know Oracle, you know most of this, most of this diagram already. Use Oracle using big data SQL to go to Hadoop or NoSQL databases. Number eight job, data engineer. Are you somebody who understands the data well, or are you a developer that can do that? Well, that's 80% of a machine learning project right now. More data gives you a better rock curve, gives you this high up and to the left instead of a random, which doesn't give you a very good growth. And then if I use Exadata, I could put things in memory. It's available, it's recoverable, it's partitionable, it has automatic indexing. Oracle in their own machine learning, in their own applications, they put machine learning in a couple of examples here. This is the manufacturing where they show you quality or yield issues. Some of the industries using AI, computers and electronic number one, then financial services, healthcare, education, 
some of the bottlenecks, why people don't do it. They don't have the skills. They don't have the data. You could already see some of the issues that you might have in this. Oracle also has human capital management where I can look at people in the company and see, do I need to give them more money or more vacation time to keep them? Machine learning is just one piece. You also have things like robotics and chatbots and things like that as well. If we look at the future, I mean, robots are here. You could use them with Oracle. Are you leveraging it now? Pepper the robot is a, will suit, seat, seat you at your sushi table. Uh, here's how to connect Pepper to Oracle. And also connect Oracle's virtual assistant to all these different products you see here. And it uses something that's very simple to use. You can see an example of what it looks like. You can also use Oracle to leverage virtual reality, mixed reality, or augmented reality. You know, with a pandemic, it's, it's very nice for someone to be able to see how the product would look on their shelf. You could also use Microsoft HoloLens to see the parts that are inside this truck. I could leverage a database, GPS, robotics. But I'm also being tracked with IoT. So I have to worry about security issues and, and the future worries that are going to happen because of this and being prepared for that. Also, companies used to be magical. Then they became manic too much. They bothered me. Then became even toxic. I think the key is build a magical company and do not move to these other areas. And you'll continue to do well. But make sure security is built into the product. Oracle over the years always has put security first. In 2013, all the things that were coming had to do with technology. Here they're still coming. Cloud computing was only coming in 2013. Here it's at 5% adoption. Over here, 30% adoption. 2015, robots were coming. Connected home was coming. Autonomous vehicles were coming. Virtual reality was here for 5% of the people. Now the robots beyond science fiction. In the future, it will be many implants. They have implants to the brain now where people can operate different limbs with their mind. Uh, 2016, all about implants coming, brain-computer interface, cognitive expert advisors. Why are things starting to come so fast? Because 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 8th, 2 to the 16th equal these numbers, 2 to the 32, 2 to the 64. Look how the number grows very fast. I put it in miles per hour or kilometers per hour, I guess you could say. Windows was 1 mile an hour. The internet 65,000. Now at 64 bit, it's 300 trillion kilometers per hour. 128 bit, 5 trillion, trillion, billion. It's going to be amazing. 2018, all about tech creating this new reality with this digital twin. Maybe you and your autonomous DBA. There's a quantum computer. We've never seen one. Uh, the thing that makes it work is something called entanglement also known as the God effect. Maybe your prayers go to God because there's an entanglement already there. You don't know. 2020, what's coming? Smart robots. Notice machine learning, not even at 5% yet. So you're learning something today that's so very important. The world is changing fast. Star Trek used to look very advanced, but now there's things that are much more advanced than this. Keep that in mind. We're moving to this new world. So again, this was just an overview. What do you have to understand? There's a lot of disruption. Innovation is where you can make a difference in the world. Why did God put you in this world at this time? It's to make an incredible difference. With machine learning, you can do that by understanding the business and where to apply those algorithms leveraging big data in different ways, and then starting to leverage things like robots. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. So make sure you hustle. Oracle, 
been around 44 years. They really have great products. They're starting to accelerate in the cloud. Their machine learning is free. They've been the number one Oracle database since the 1970s, and they still are. Some things are growing a little bit, but nothing is like Oracle. If you have Oracle now, it's very, very good. And there's the tuning book if you want to make things fast. I wrote that a long time, a while ago, still available now. And then I just put Rod Serling. This is the Twilight Zone. If you've never seen it, it's very good. He would always say any state, any people that don't recognize the worth and dignity of a man, that state is obsolete. And there's my Twitter and email here at the bottom. Do I have any questions out there? I know we're at the time. I'll ask our wonderful hosts. Hopefully they can still hear me. Uh, any questions? There's, there's no questions so far, but I have a question here. Uh, did Richard know about the Metaverse? recently, that's a popular issue, right? Uh, I'm, I'm curious about what do you think about deep learning could contribute to Metaverse? How could deep learning contribute to, what was the thing though? I didn't hear what it was called. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Um, Metaverse is uh, the popular thing that uh, micro and Facebook, they want to, uh, build a virtual virtual system to let people work on the, the universe they create. Ah, yes, sure. I, I do know that. So, I mean, I mean, it's, it's nice in their new company metaverse. I mean, I think that's a nice thing that people can do if they want to know, do that. Me, me, I'm much bigger on the impact you can make in the world, you know, as an engineer, somebody who creates something nobody ever created uh, that makes the world a better place. I don't know if that answered it well. <laughs> but yeah, Metaverse is, is, is very popular and it's, I think it can be very fun and it also can be used to be very creative some of the 3D uh, and uh, AI products that they have where you can do virtual reality or mixed reality. Uh, but I think, I think the issues of the world are, are, are a little easier right now. Uh, using machine learning to find cures for different diseases, using machine learning to grow better food or, or more successful food uh, products or uh, more efficiently, uh, using it to help people understand things better or teach them better, uh, using them just to make life easier, uh, using robotics maybe to help you when you get older, to help you, you know, move to your bed or to help cook something or something like this. These are the real keys with machine learning, but machine learning is really something, if you could live at any time in history and know anything at any time in history, the thing you would want to know if you could look at all of history at one time, you would say, I want to be at the time when machine learning is starting, which is right now, because I know this is the biggest impact you'll ever make in the world will be with this product. And so that's why I think it's just a, a wonderful thing. And I mean, to some degrees, we're leveraging the products, you know, that people built now to be able to speak around the world 